Okay, so in a previous video I talked about the 2.4G wireless controller which is a USB stick that plugs into your PC or Mac and that enables you to have control over the Ultimate 2.0 robot or uh, MBOT if you have that one. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk in a little bit more detail about the program that I wrote for that. The reason why I w wanted to make this video is because this robot can be controlled using an app, uh, Android, iPhone app, and you know for kids it's quite a bit, it's a lot of fun for them to control the robot, drive the robot around, move the robot, and access the various functions of the robot using the app. But more or less at that point you have a, basically a remote control car or remote control vehicle that yeah you you build from scratch but you don't really have the 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 hands-on stem learning where you want to get in there and 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 play with the code the kids don't really have a a motivation to 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 do anything with code because it's already pre-coded in the app so what i wanted to do is is look at some of the things that you could do which for me is 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 a lot of fun it's it's interesting to be able to control the robot using the keyboard on my PC, have the robot sitting over on the floor or, or wherever you want to drive it, and be able to control that using commands that I myself typed into or, or, or moved into the, the Scratch interface. Okay, so this is a screenshot of the M-Block software uh, where you're able to drag and drop various codes and commands uh, to, to move and to uh, interact with the robot. Uh, again, I'm using the uh, 2.4G wireless serial controller to allow these moves to be uh, performed in real time when I press the keyboard. This program gives us a much more uh, fine-tuned control over the robot uh, and allows us to move it using various keys on the keyboard. For example, uh, I've got a ver at the very top there, when the up arrow key is pressed, uh, play a sound and then I'm going to move the, I'm going to set the encoder motor on port 2, which is the motor that pushes the robot forward, to full power. And the power goes to 255. So let's press the up button and you'll hear the sound played and you'll hear the robot move in the background. Moving forward. Okay, let's take a look at the robot. So here's the robot moving forward. Okay, and let's move it back. Backing up. And let's stop it there. Stop. Okay, so the robot is taking commands from the keyboard directly and it's it's in real time. This is for rotating the camera, so let's see what that does. I'm going to go ahead and do rotate camera left. A left rotation and a right. Rotate camera right. Okay. Rotate camera left. Rotate camera left. Rotate camera left. Rotate camera left. So you can see it's moving the camera. Okay, I also have a, a piece in here which allows me to do some fine adjustment to the wheels when it's turning. I can go to the uh, left. Adjusting wheels left. And I can go to the right. Adjusting wheels right. Okay. And looking at the robot. Adjusting wheels right. We can see that this basically. Adjusting wheels right. Adjusting wheels right. Adjusting wheels right. Gives us some turning capability. Now, one thing I programmed into the robot is, if we try and do a left-hand turn, which is with a, a, a left arrow. Motion required for turning. The robot says no. The program says no. Basically, it's not moving, so it can't do a left turn. So let's straighten out the wheels a little bit. Adjusting wheels left, adjusting wheels left, adjusting wheels left. Okay, and let's go ahead and go forward. And then do a left turn. Moving forward. Turning left. Center so, wheels. So the robot turns left. Full stop. The robot turns left, and then it does a, a, a part of the program called center wheels. So here's the left arrow key uh, block of code. Basically when the left arrow key is pressed, we're checking to see if the motor is actually running. 
and if it is running then we'll do a left turn and if it's not running we're gonna say motion required for turning so let's go ahead and it's not moving right now so let's try a left turn motion required for turning. so nothing happens it just tells us the motion required for turning and that's this bottom block down here on the second if statement moving forward we're moving forward and then we do a left Turning turn left. the robot does a left turn Center wheels. and then automatically centers the wheels Full stop. and I'll stop it there okay so center wheels is this block right here basically it waits five seconds and then it recenters the wheels that way it's basically made a left turn at that point so it's just the way that I decided that I wanted to write the code for this uh, particular robot but it just shows the usage of the uh, nested if-then-else statements. And for the right wheel, it's basically the same thing in reverse, and that's the end of the program. So in summary, what we have is the, the control of the robot uh, using a PC and not using a, a smartphone or a tablet or other type of remote control. And what that gives us is um, more creativity. Uh, any, if, a, <clears throat> if you have a student who is working on this or your child is working on this and you have assembled the robot and it comes to time okay let's 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 start the robot you can you can very quickly build a, a small program that that just just moves the robot back and forth a little bit just to show that hey yeah this there is control between the the PC and the robot and then taking it further okay let's we want to move the robot forward we want to move it move it backwards we want to turn the camera around we want to we, we want to have a various levels of control and that leads toward programming the robot in a a more more and more dynamic fashion so the example that I have is is I do a left hand turn but it just doesn't do a simple left hand turn and then stop turning left it, it does a left-hand turn and then it straightens the wheels back out. Oh, it's 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 a fairly arbitrary choice on my part to do that, but the point is is that it allows you to begin to build these if-then-else type of logical structures, which the kids begin to see as, hey, you know, this this is programming. This is actually STEM learning. So one other option that I used is the ability to play a sound. When you, when you push one of the keys on the keyboard to actuate a, a movement of the robot. And the way I got those sounds is very simply I went to a uh, robot voice generator, which is uh, online. You can see it in the screenshot. And you can just basically type in anything you want here. So I can type in, for example, uh, turning left. And then I hit the button over here. Turning left. And there was turning left. And then I, I think I speeded it up and I upped the pitch a little bit. And turning left. And that's basically where, about where I was. Turning left. Yeah. So you get that instant voice feedback when you when you when you or someone else presses the key. You know exactly what that robot's going to do. And right from here, you can save. It says download audio file. You can just save the audio file and uh, save that and then so then over in mblock you can go over and uh, here's uh, three tabs up top here scripts costumes and sounds so you just click on sounds and then here is a sound that I made previously moving forward. so that's a moving forward sound so what I can do here is uh, having saved the previous sound on my hard drive I can uh, upload uh, that file and save it and then that file will be available inside here and then all I need to do is add the play sound block so play sound I would take this and I can drop it and pick whichever sound I want from that so that's how you uh, add something interesting and you know you could have the kids record their own voice uh, saying you know turning left or or it's it's up to their own creativity as to what they want to do but it just adds this 
this logical sequence of events that's happening within the code that's visually very obvious and, and should be uh, interesting for the, the kids to, to do as well.